Hi guys, welcome to Swal Single with a Life. We are continuing with our series Effective Singleness. And last episode, we looked at character trait you should marry, which was episode seven. This is episode eight. We're going to be looking at some group of people that you should not marry. And so I'll be delving more into those character traits to help you to be able to identify them, especially if you desire to have a godly home, a peaceful marital journey, and you want the best to come out of your life as a married person, then it's very important that you pay attention to today's teachings to make sure that these people are not in your list of people that you want to marry. Please encourage me by clicking on the thumbs up leave a reaction on this video it could be just liking the video or leaving a comment sharing and subscribing to help support the work that i do with my singles thanks for joining me once again let's get straight into what we are doing in this episode which is people you should not marry before I give you the first group of people you should not marry, I would like to read a scripture in Proverbs 25:24. It says, "It is better to dwell in the corner of a house top than in a house shared with a contentious woman." So some of the this is New King James version. Some of the versions instead of contentious woman, they will say quarrelsome woman or a nagging woman. Number 1, do not marry a contentious person. Now, the Bible specifically said contentious woman because women fix their contention or their nagging or quarrelsome nature to another level because we all know how emotional women are. But there are men who are also very contentious. They like to nag. They like to quarrel. They are always ready to fight. Everything is argument every little thing they turn it into an argument so i'm going to categorize this whole contentious people by adding angry people okay so don't marry a quarrelsome or an angry person yeah and naturally somebody who is quarrelsome is an angry person or somebody who is contentious or likes to nag they are angry people and you would say well, we all get angry. Yes, we all get angry, but there are levels of anger. There are people who are very quick-tempered. Even if it's a joke, it will turn into a fight. So, for example, there are people that when they get angry, their anger takes so long to cool down. And you will see a typical example in the way they behave when they are angry. So, for instance, somebody who is very quick-tempered, who has anger issues or anger problems would will be very abusive when they are angry that's when you see them banging the door they will throw things at you they can even hold your dress and rip it out they can uh, slap you they will beat you they will call you names they would insult you and some even get to the point where they start cursing and that's when it now leaves the physical into the spiritual because when they start cursing they are now inviting spirit into the whole thing and we know that demons and spirits feeds on negativity so when somebody is becoming very negative they're becoming very abusive very toxic whereby they cannot curse you they're calling you names they are telling you how worthless you are how um, useless you are how good for nothing you are and they just treat you anyhow that is another level of anger that you cannot live with forever and we know that marriage is meant to be for life until death do you part but there are people because of the angry person they married they can go into early grave they can die early okay we've heard about people whose husbands have beaten them to death they are wives who have shot their, their husbands where do you think this is coming from this is all out of bitterness anger which is out of place so if you're in a relationship you need to understand that whatever character you are seeing 
whatever attitude the person is showing you it's not going to be different when you get married so if they are abusive if they like to curse if they like to call the names of gods and saying i'll curse you with this god i'll curse you with this spirit i'll call you, i'll curse you with mommy water these are not things that you joke with don't marry somebody who is constantly insulting you constantly beating you constantly doesn't want to talk to you because they are angry and until they cool off you can't reach them if you take that into marriage you're going to be depressed you're going to be stressed you can even have mental issues as a result of that and you can die so please don't take these things lightly and don't let love blind you whatever you are seeing now is the same thing you're going to be living with for the rest of your life and maybe at the moment you're in a relationship and you are coping with this character trait because you can't see the person so maybe once in a while they do it and you feel okay i can manage but remember when you marry you're going to be living under the, you're going to be living under the same roof so it's going to be intensified you're going to be seeing it every day and that is when it becomes a problem and then the last thing you want to do is to divorce okay so sometimes people start off and they try to make it work and it doesn't work and eventually they have to break up they have to divorce but a broken relationship is better than a broken marriage okay so please break the relationship if this is your reality right now it will not work in the long round if you want your peace of mind and you want to have a successful marital journey number two do not marry somebody who is unforgiving unforgiveness is also part of what happens when somebody is contentious um, the reason why it takes so long for people to cool down when they are angry or they keep nagging and nagging and nagging is because they haven't forgiven and sometimes these things they can be very subtle and if you are not careful you might think it's normal but no it can cause a lot of problems later on in marriage so a typical example if this person is always referring you to the past they've got a book they've got a journal where they write everything that you do so anytime you hurt them they jot they jot it down anytime you did something wrong they've written it down it's very easy for them to refer you all they have to do is to go and pick the book and say well on 21st of december 2023 this is what you did to me and i forgave you and you said you'll never do it again and today being the first of february 2024 you've done it again they are literally not going to forget one of the things that first corinthians 13 4 to 6 talks about regarding love is that love it's not easily angered it does not keep records of wrongs so if this person is always keeping records you know reminding you of every little thing things you've done come on how are you going to have your mental sanity how are you going to live in peace when you always have to go back to the past if you are in a relationship like that and the person for so long has not changed it simply means they are not going to change so please don't go ahead and marry them. The third kind of people you should not marry are people who feels marrying you is doing you a favor. They feel like if you don't marry them, no other man will marry you or no other woman will marry you. They feel like they are your life. It's as if they hold your oxygen box. And if you don't marry them, they are going to drop it. And that will be the end of your life. That is a lie from the pit of hell no human being has such power over your life it's only god who has that power and even god he doesn't threaten us he doesn't force us to accept him jesus came to die for the whole world but he still gives us our free will to accept him as our lord and personal savior if we want to have a life with him so nobody should threaten you and make you feel so scared that if you don't marry them anybody you marry will die we've had a situation like that in swal where this guy is in a relationship with a swali and was doing the wrong thing 
and when the girl wanted to pull out, he's like, if you don't marry me, any man you marry will die. And I said, nonsense. That is nonsense. You don't threaten somebody because you couldn't have your way with them. So we had to pray, obviously. Sometimes when people come up with such things, it's a sign that they are doubling in, in the demonic. So they think they have enough power to make your life miserable. So definitely, if you're in a relationship or you've, you've met somebody who's threatening you like that, pray against it. Okay, pray against it and cut off from the person. We have to literally get rid of this person from Swal. One of the key things you always have to look for when you are getting married is to make sure that you have the peace of God about it. You have to be at peace. There should be no fears, no doubt, no pressure. So anybody that makes you feel under pressure or feel scared and, and making you to wonder if you are doing the right thing or not, is not the right person for you. You should be eager, you should be happy, wanting to live with the person and not just wanting to leave the person because you feel threatened or you feel it's a favor that you are doing them or they are doing you a favor. That is the wrong approach for marriage. If this is your reality, then you've got to put your feet down because sometimes what they do is they will try and get your parents on board, they will try and get your pastors on board and they don't show your pastor or your parents or your uncle or whoever your guardian is. They don't show them the, the side that you know. So these people will be so eager wanting you to marry them, not knowing that they are pushing you into the wrong hands. So you, the person that is getting married, you know your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whoever is trying to marry you, you know them better. So make sure that you put your feet down and if you are not at peace, if you are not eager, you are not excited to marry them, don't go ahead and marry. The fourth group of people I would advise you not to marry are lazy people. Oh my God. I don't know how to overemphasize this. Don't marry a lazy person. Marriage is one place that laziness does not help. Marriage is one place that if you are lazy, it would easily show and it can easily cause so many problems. Remember I said, whoever you are marrying, however their attitude, their character is, it will not change when you get married. In fact, it's going to be amplified because right now you are single, you live in your different homes. So if you don't brush your teeth, if you don't bath, if you are not cooking, if you are not tidying up your house, the person you want to get married to will not know. They wouldn't see it. But once you come and live under the same roof, this, this is where your weaknesses are going to be exposed. Because the person can see you 24-7. Everything you are doing, they can see. And this is also where you become very annoying and very difficult to live with. And this is where, for instance, if you are a firstborn, you've got to be more, you've got to pay more attention. Because most of the time, if you are firstborn and you have younger siblings at home, you are likely to just be the one ordering your siblings to cook, to clean, to do this. It's like you are supervising them. So you may end up not knowing how to do a lot of things or you can become lazy eventually because you are not doing it consistently it will not become a part of you so when you now get married you realize that actually you are not used to these house chores you don't really like doing these house chores and this is also why sometimes the first ones don't get married first you see that the younger ones will all get married i mean i'm not saying in all cases but in some cases the young ones will all get married because the young ones are more resourceful. They are more hardworking. So if you are a firstborn, make sure that the house chores, it's not going to change. When you get married, you're going to still be doing house chores. And this time around, it's going to be two people. 
So if you used to do it for yourself alone as a single man or a single woman who is now who is living alone, when you get married, it's the two of you. So the work is going to be double. Marriage is one place that there is a lot of work. In fact, I'm going to read what I've written down to make sure that I don't miss anything important. Okay. So in marriage, you're going to work more and sleep less. Especially if you are not financially stable before you got married. If you are not financially free, you don't have financial freedom. And financial freedom, I mean, is you being able to buy anything and go anywhere and do anything that requires money without you having to even look at the price. You like something, you see a shirt, you like it, you buy it regardless of the price you can afford. You want to travel to the US right now. You don't care about plane tickets amount. You can just go because you've got the money to afford it. So once you are financially independent or once you are financially free, you have financial freedom. It doesn't matter the price tag on things. You've got money, okay, to be able to do it. Now, an average single is not financially free and most of the time even those of us who manage to save a lot by the time we are getting married we use most of that money on the wedding so you enter your marriage you are back to square one because all your money is gone and you have to now be working so hard to save again and because you are now responsible for yourself, you've left your parents' home, it means you are responsible for the bills, the food, the rent, and everything. And if you don't have money, it means that you have to do two jobs, you have to do three jobs, or you have to work so hard. And sometimes some of the jobs, they are not even paying very well, but because you need the money, yeah, so you have to work like a donkey. So you'll be working more and sleeping less. Because sometimes the time you have to wake up and go to work, it's so early in the morning and you come back home very late. And especially, you will understand what I mean by you, you work more and sleep less when you start having children. You will no longer have sleeping time or waking up time. You wake up when your kids are awake you sleep when they are asleep and even you can't sleep when they are asleep because you've got work to do yeah especially when the kids are very young they have they are still babies or toddlers when during the day they keep you so busy so there are some house chores you may not be you may not be able to do when they are awake until they go to bed until they are having a nap that, that's when you start running around, oh, let me quickly do this before they wake up. So, you wouldn't have enough sleep. And if you are a lazy person, this is where your true character will start being exposed. You'll be struggling to handle parenting. When we do our prayer retreat with our singles, sometimes we do an all night. And we finish around four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning when we finish if you are single you can decide to sleep from that 5 a.m to about 5 p.m in the evening nobody cares but we because we have kids we go to bed around that 5 a.m by 6 a.m., 7 a.m., the kids are awake. We have to wake up. So we don't have the luxury to sleep for the rest of that day. So if we are lazy, how are we going to manage it? Another example is that when you are single, you can decide not to cook. You can decide to sleep the whole day. You can decide not to clean your house. You can decide not to wash the plate. In fact, there are some singles who eat and, um, you know, push their plate under their bed or 
they leave their plate in their sitting room and go to bed the next day they wash when you are married you can't do that you start doing that you'll be branded a dirty person you can't just decide that for a whole week you're not going to cook your kids have to eat and also if you used to be the person who would just eat rice maybe you are a rice person or you are a spaghetti person a potato person so every day that is what you eat marriage is different your husband may not be a rice person he must he might be the kind of person who is who likes different kinds of food and worst of all there are some men who don't like leftover food every day they want fresh food that is a another topic on its own yeah those men i don't know whether i should add them to the kind of people you shouldn't marry or not i don't know yeah there are people like that they want fresh food every day so if you are lazy you're gonna struggle because every day you have to be cooking every day you have to be cooking yeah so you can't be lazy in marriage at all and then when you have your kids when they start going to nursery to kindergarten primary school this 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 is work this is work and you know i have been fortunate if i should put it that way because all the time when i had my kids i stay home on maternity leave for at least one year before i go to to work and i noticed that when my daughter was one and i went back to work i still felt like i went to work too early i felt like i've returned to work too early but there are people there are wives who have to go back to work when their child is three months and that three months you are just literally coming off postpartum your body probably is not even in place yet because childbirth brings all kinds of complications to a woman's body so your body is still coming together you have to go to work why because many times the financial backing is not there so there are people who even go to work after one month they have to go to work and if you are lazy how do you cope with having a little baby and then going to work and some people who go back to work after their maternity leave they have to leave home very early they have to wake up very early about 5 a.m about 6 a.m some 4 a.m get the kids ready take the kids to nursery before they go to work and when they finish work on their way they have to go and collect the children from the nursery and come home with the kids and when you come back home child care continues all the things you have to do yeah so it is hard work a lot of work for both you and the person you are getting married to this is why you cannot marry a lazy wife you cannot marry a lazy husband lazy men also tend to leave everything to the wife to do and that's why i've been teaching on the married with a life why some husbands do not help their wives one of the reason is laziness laziness people marry thinking this is my arrival point so that's the kind of people you shouldn't marry people who think they've arrived I've arrived, I'm married, so I'm settled. Like the way we say, eh, you need to settle in marriage. When are you settling down? All these terms are examples of how people's mindset is. They feel marriage is a, a place to settle. So they get married and they settle. They don't want to work. They don't want to work hard. They don't want to do anything. They leave everything to the woman to do because they feel yes uh, this is my time to cross my leg and let somebody take care of me that kind of laziness is not going to make your marriage work it's going to put a lot of pressure on your relationship you're not going to have enough time together you're not even going to be able to raise your, your kids properly if you're a lazy person so marriage is not an arrival point where life stops it's not your heaven marriage is not heaven whereby you feel i've now arrived in heaven everything is going to be rosy 
or my husband is the one that needs to work let me just sit down and eat sleep produce kids and just be there no it's also not a place where you feel like your wife should take care of you so you leave everything for her to do she has to be the one doing the child care she has to be the one cooking she has to be the one doing the house chores and also go out and work and bring money whilst you cross your leg and sit down you are not helping her and you think it is manly you think you are the the boss in the house so this is your time to be worshipped no it is sheer laziness and if that is your mindset as a single which you are taking into marriage then you're gonna really really struggle in that marriage and actually if you're in a relationship and you have the slightest clue that this man or this woman thinks you are the one going to take care of them when you get married they think marriage is the arrival point or you can sense laziness where they don't want to improve themselves they don't want to grow they don't want to do anything new they want you to do everything for them then you have to think about it carefully make sure these people genuinely change and i wonder if you can change them but if you don't they don't change please don't marry them if you are somebody who is in into business or you are into ministry or you you are into um something like what i'm doing and you don't have support from your partner because your partner is lazy that is when your life will stop you can't do anything again you can't become useful to your society again your dreams will now die all your aspirations will die and that is not good okay so marriage is supposed to make us bring the best out of us not to break us not to bring the worst out of us and this is why it's important that you choose carefully you put all your emotions aside use your head your head first your head means that you have to look at all these characteristics and i've given you practical reasons practical examples for you to check and make sure that you are choosing right because this is your life it is your life and it can make or or make you yes and the last group of people i would say you should not marry are the people that we call mommy's boy daddy's girl or they are also daddy's boys and mommy's girls okay but that is so deep that i don't want to do it on this episode i want to do it as a stand alone video okay so in my next episode which is episode nine of effective singleness we're going to be looking at why you should not marry a mommy's girl a daddy's girl a mommy's boy a daddy's boy and if you decide that you want to marry them at least you will have a very good background understanding of who they are and probably how to handle them so i'm looking forward to episode nine and i hope you are excited and also looking forward to that episode please make sure you click on the thumbs up to like this video i'm always looking forward to hear your thoughts okay so please leave your comments if you've got any question any topic that you want me to treat please leave it in the comment if you're going through any personal challenges in choosing um your spouse or in deciding whether the person you are with you should marry or not you can send me an email okay send me an email outline the situation and let me assess it okay i'll give you my honest opinion but ultimately the decision is yours no matter how good somebody thinks a person is no matter how bad they think a person is you are the one who knows them better you are the one who is going to live with them 
for the rest of your life. So if you choose wrongly and it goes wrong, you are the one who will suffer. If you choose well and good comes out of it, you are the one who will enjoy. So this is why it's important that you receive, you get all the knowledge, you get all the guidance, all the counseling as much as possible. And then you let the Holy Spirit guide you to make that final choice of a spouse. I hope this video has blessed you. Once again, thank you for joining. Please share this video. These are good stuff that I've taught on this video. And so don't leave it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others, especially the young people you know around you. Share it and let it be a blessing to them. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Subscribe on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Click on the notifications to receive alert anytime I'm live or anytime I post new videos. And thank you for watching. God bless you. I'll see you in episode nine. Bye for now.